Okay, here I go again, here I go again, here I go again, here I go again. I should look beautiful. Everything should be just perfectly wonderful. <clears throat> Let me position myself well here. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Don Rafa, Don Rafael. Don Rafa was married to Doña Cuba. And um, we met Don Rafa when we were the managers on Coronado, Coronado Terrace. He came to rent one of the apartments because at that time Cubans were coming from Cuba. I forget what the... There was a many different phases of Cubans coming out of Cuba. But Don Rafa was already in the United States from a long time ago. He lived in New York. Don Rafa didn't come from Cuba at that time, but he came along with other Cubans coming to Los Angeles. So, so he came to rent one of the apartments. And it's, Don Rafa was like a little kid. Don Rafa did tricks. Don Rafa made papalotes, which papalotes are kites. From Cuba, he would make kites. Don Rafa, as a young man in Cuba, would, was a hustler, doing all kinds of stuff. He said he would go in the morning fishing. He'd go, he, he knew how to make nets. He had that, that bamboo thing that had the string in the middle, like a giant needle, and he could make nets. And the same net um, technique, he, he made hammocks. He made a hammock for Lelo. Um, so he knew how to do that. So he said, he told me once that when he was young in Cuba, he uh, would make the nets and go cast the nets and catch shrimp in the mornings, shrimp. And then he'd have enough shrimp that he could um, sell and make money and also have shrimp to eat. Don Rafa um, could do tops, you know, spinning tops, uh, you know, wood. The fat wood top with the, like the nail on the bottom, you put the string. Don Rafa could froop and catch it right here on his nail and have it spinning right there and go like that around his back and catch it this way and have it spinning there again. Let's see, what else did he do? He did a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, Doña Cuba, his wife, would say that he would be messing around with kids, doing the tops and other things, and betting kids for, you know, pennies or nickels or whatever. And then the kids would get pissed and come over and, and tell Doña Cuba, hey, your son just ripped me off for five cents. Well, you know, it wasn't Doña Cuba's son. That was her, her husband. Um, Don Rafa also said that he worked in a, a real cheap circus in Cuba. Yeah. And I don't know what they did. He said it was a, a cheap, cheap circus. Um, he also said he worked in a casino where all the cards were marked. And they asked him, well, how did the cards mark? Because he, he said they would mark the cards with a razor blade, a certain way that they'd cut the cards in a certain way that you knew. We, as he, he was a dealer, so he knew which cards, and they would cheat people all the time. That was in Cuba. In Cuba. So um, he came... What was that? I was still in, in high school. I don't know. I think I, no, I was in uh, Virgil in junior high, middle school when they came. And they rented one of the apartments there. And right away he was like playing with us and telling us all kinds of stuff. Doña Cuba was a wonderful cook. Doña Cuba would cook all kinds of great food. But my mother, this is something I should say about my mom that told me when I was a little kid. My mom always said, no matter how hungry you are, no matter how hungry you are, if you're over somebody else's house and they say, would you like to eat, would, you know, uh, it's dinner time or lunch, where we have some food, you want to eat? I was always supposed to say, even if I was starving, no, you know, or in Spanish, no gracia, you know, because my mother, when she was growing up, it was like, you know, way back in New York and people were poor, so you didn't eat over somebody else's house, you ate at home. So she taught me, always, always, just say no and you, you, you know, you're going home to eat. But my mother would say it like this, it, it, um, she would say, cuando estás en casa ajena, en casa ajena, you know, always say, you know, no thank you, you know, I'm, I'm fine, I'm not hungry. But then I always thought, well, who's Hannah? 
Casa Hena. Well, if I'm ever at Hena's house, I'll tell her I'm not going to eat. But I knew what it meant, but it, at first it was like, Hena, I don't know who Hena is. But Hena means, you know, strangers' homes, you know, away from your house. Because in Spanish, certain words have more meaning than in English. So, okay, Doña Cuba would cook wonderful stuff. And she'd always offer me something, and I said, no, no, thank you, I'm not hungry. And a bunch of times, a bunch of times. So then one day she went to my mother and said, what's wrong with Emilio? Every time I offer him something to eat, he says, no, thank you. And my mother explained that she had told me that don't be eating in Casa Hena and stuff like that. But then my mom said, when Doña Cuba asks you if you want to eat something, it's okay, you can eat at Doña Cuba's house. So then I would eat at Doña Cuba's house. She made everything wonderful. Everything. You know, like rice and beans, arroz con pollo, all kinds of stuff. She even made the Cuban tamales, which aren't like Mexican tamales. Uh, that's a whole other, other story. But she'd make great Cuban coffee. And then um, there in Coronado Terrace, I was always helping Don Rafa. I helped everybody, okay? Danny was out somewhere. Frank was too little. And I was always around helping everybody. So then Don Rafa was uh, trying to fix the antenna. In that area on Coronado Terrace, the uh, um, TV reception was bad. Because where we lived, like, it was like north, kind of, no, uh, there was the Hollywood freeways, and then it went up a hill, and uh, what is it, the uh, Angel, oh, Queen of Angels Hospital was up there. So that kind of blocked the signal, because beyond that was the mountains that had the antennas that sent the TV signal. So we always had a bad TV's um, reception. So I would be helping on Rafa, we'd move the antenna to different places. One day we're working on the antenna. Don Rafa, I mean, Doña Cuba made chicharrones, but Francis said there was just a skin from the uh, pork. But man, she cooked that up. Like, Don Rafa would go and buy the pork skin, and then she'd cut it up in little square pieces and fried it in a big... Cubans love aluminum pots. So she had this big aluminum pot. She'd put that all in there and it would render out the fat. And she'd use that fat to fry like potatoes or make all kinds of other stuff. But then you had like chicharrones. So one day we're up on the roof and then she had been making that stuff. And then she comes out, oh yeah, you know, yatang and stuff. So she got a bunch and put it in an aluminum foil and tossed it up to us on the roof. Man, that was so good. It was like hot, just made. It was like melting your mouth kind of stuff. You know, nowadays people don't eat that. All, oh, cholesterol and fat and all this kind of stuff. No, that was great. When Cuba made great coffee. Hmm. All kinds of wonderful stuff. Don Cuba knew how to sew and stuff like that. So one day, Don Rafa comes to me and Frank and says, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make you guys a kite. And we thought, what, a kite? You don't know how to make a kite. So he made the whole thing like from scratch. He asked us, do you have any paper, like thin kind of paper? And me and Frank said, yeah, mom has some kind of that uh, white, thin kind of tissue paper that you put in presents for Christmas and stuff. So me and Frank went and got that paper. I think it was around like that big. And then Don Rafa went out in front, and there was a tree and the, uh, some twigs from the tree. He got the knife from the house, a big, you know, regular knife to cut for kitchen knife. So he gets that knife, goes to the tree, chops some uh, branches off, some thin branches around, and then cut them up around that big. This is this was amazing. Okay, so um, he puts the sticks together. It was like a a hexagon, kind of, like a stop sign. I think that's a hexagon. He made the sticks like that, tied it in the middle, put a string around the outside, got a made paste from from a flour. Flour and water in a can and the stove mixed it up, you know. I don't know what the proportions were, but it made a paste. So then he um, cut the, with the same knife, the kitchen knife, cut the paper, to size, didn't measure anything. It was just perfect. Cut it, put that a frame of the twigs with the string on the paper, put the, with another stick, put the paste that we had made, that he had made, 
and folded it up and within a few minutes that thing was dry. He got, we got string or I don't know, we found some string somewhere. And he put it on the kite and made a tail. We went outside and that thing flew wonderfully. We were amazed. From nothing he made this kite that was like better than a kite you'd buy in the store. <laughs> that was great. So Rafa was, was always doing some kind of stuff. I tell you, he could do the tops perfectly. Foom in the air, catch it on the nail, throw it up this way, catch it like that, do that. I don't know, he did other things too. Don Rafa, Don Rafa. Then Don Rafa came to Miami. Don Rafa moved a whole bunch. He moved all over the place. In, in California, he moved to various places. And then uh, he went to Florida here and moved around all over the place. Dad came, mom and dad. Dad, When dad retired, dad took a trip every year in the car with mom. They went to New York, always went to New York, and then went everywhere, went to Canada and all kinds of places all around. He came to uh, Florida. He knew um, the city where Don Rafa lived, but he didn't have the address. So dad said, well, I'm going to drive around and maybe I'll find Don Rafa driving. And sure enough, he saw Don Rafa, followed him, honked the horn, and then they went to the go visit Don Yacuba and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then they went back to California and Don Rafa and Don Yacuba lived in the same retirement apartments there in Santa Ana where my parents lived. And then Don Yacuba started getting her Alzheimer's, which was sad. But then um, they moved back to Florida and then when I was married to Gloria, we went and visited him, we went to visit Don Rafa, and then Doña Cuba was already in a convalescent home because she got Alzheimer's and would leave the house and go wandering around the neighborhood and Don Rafa used to have to go find her because she'd be all lost and stuff. So she was, we went to see her for a few minutes. It was very sad, yeah, very sad. You know, and Don Rafa was very sad, but Don Rafa didn't show it, you know. And we visit, I visited Don Rafa a few times and stuff, and then my parents came to visit one time and we went to visit Don Rafa. And um, Jenny was his, they had adopted a daughter. I don't, I don't remember, I think they adopted this daughter, and the daughter had um, a daughter which was named Jenny, and then we went to go visit them because she had a tajel, I don't know if it was sewing, she had, they had some kind of company business and we went to visit them but then you know as time went on <clears throat> Don Rafa was already blind and I would go visit him and all, all I would have to say is Don Rafa and he knew who I was just by the sound of my voice he had this little apartment that it was like a, a bungalow and he would hang out outside and he already knew how to get back in and, and all that kind of stuff um, but it was amazing he was already in his 90s and I come walking up, and and he, I saw him sitting over there, and he was blind already. And I go, Don Rafa, and he goes, Emilio. He knew me, you know, just by the sound of my voice. Don Rafa was very good in his head, just like my mom was very good in her head until she, she passed away. But Don Cuba got Alzheimer's and all that kind of stuff, so that was very sad. Um, I don't know, that's it for Don Rafa. <laughs>